Hey guys, before we begin, I wanted to let you know that you can now see exclusive weekly updates on all of my projects, including five years later, over on my Patreon for just one dollar. Go check it out. In the summer of 2007, I made some pretty significant discoveries that would change my life forever. I finally started listening to some actual music, LimeWire was still a thing, and perhaps my biggest life-changing moment of all, I discovered that you can edit any picture you have on your computer with MS Paint. Now, that may seem silly, but this one skill, if I can even call it a skill, was the foundation of literally everything I've ever done going forward. And hey, don't knock MS Paint, it's actually still a pretty good program that I still use to this day. Say what you want about the program, but there is nothing that beats the usefulness of this curve tool. At first, I didn't do too much but just take the photos my father already uploaded onto the computer of my family and then added some colorful shapes and borders to them, but it wasn't until I started purposefully taking pictures with the intention to edit them that things really started taking off. Remember, this was back before I even knew Photoshop existed, let alone owned it. I started making your typical overactive, imagination-filled story about me walking through some portal and entering this cartoon world, and now that I think about it, it was basically Chalk Zone. But I never actually saw Chalk Zone at the time, so it doesn't really count as a ripoff, right? I didn't even know what a video editing software was at the time, so to get these little films to work, I'd open the pictures in Windows Slideshow mode and just rapidly tap the arrow key to the next slide and force my mom to watch them as I did my best to narrate what's happening. Hey mom, come check out this animation I made! Unfortunately, I've since lost all of these files from back in the day, or else I'd be showing them right now. Anyways, the more I expanded upon this project, the more I realized that I can actually make things appear to move if I put more pictures in between each motion, with less of a distance between each frame, and play them really, really fast. It was at this moment that I felt like I was the first person to ever discover animation. <laughs> Moving on, I became obsessed with making these little slideshow animations for the rest of the summer. Almost every day was spent thinking of what new and cool effects I could try to make. I became very attached to this fire character I always drew that my brain would not allow me to accept was just a heat blast ripoff. But this was the first character I knew how to draw from any angle and make him do any motion. I mean, he's a very simplistic character design, but I was 11, so this was super impressive to me. Remember when I said I lost all those old files? Well, that happened right then and there at the end of that summer. So I haven't even seen these old slideshow animations for about 12 years now and I was crushed. It took me about a month of sulking, but eventually I came around to trying again. This part was a little hazy, but somehow I discovered that my computer had something called Windows Movie Maker. I don't remember if my mom pointed it out or I read it online somewhere, but point is, now there was a program that can move all these pictures for me, like a real animated movie. This time, I wanted to make something to put on YouTube. This was when YouTube first started becoming mainstream, and crude online animations like Stick Figures on Crack and Madness Combat were a thing, and I wanted to be like that. Yup. Those were my inspirations. I decided to make mine Ben 10 themes because this was also around the time I was really getting obsessed with the show. The first thing I wanted to make was Ben using Upgrade to merge with a car. You know, something easy like that. After about three days, I managed to make this. Yeah, I have no idea where that Red Devil idea came from, but it happened. This was the pinnacle of my work at the time, and of course, I wanted to keep going. Instead of properly planning what I wanted to do to next, I just started making shit up as I went. The following scene shows Upgrade glitching into Wild Mutt, and somehow the SUV disappears. Wild Mutt then pounces on the Devil Man, only to be electrocuted, tricked, and then transformed back to Ben. With no regard for his timeout function, I had him go alien again, this time with a transformation sequence. Notice how I used the split transition to show lines going up his body, and the jaw transition to show Wild Mutt opening his mouth? Yeah, this was some next level skills right here. Ghost Freak dodges the lasers, yet times out once more. The devil shoots him, making Ben turn into Heat Blast, then Grey Matter, then de-transform from Ghost Freak. But then the shocking plot point is revealed. The devil was actually an alien, and we've been dealing with another Ben. Yep, that's right, I predicted Albedo. I made him up, Alien Force was ripping off of my work, start paying up my royalties, Warner Brothers. Also, check out that shading. I was really trying to push this thing. Guess I didn't think ears were important though. So now, as I continue to improvise the story as I went along, Ben and, uh, Nega Ben get into a battle involving Accelerate, Cannonbolt, and an easter egg of Ghost Freak's face turning into a clown for one frame, which I thought was top tier comedy. Ben wakes up to find Nega Ben strapped him to a chair and stole his watch, and fuses them together to create the Biomitrix, which doesn't do anything new. As Nega Ben begins testing his new Christmas colored powers, Ben finds the strength to break through steel and escape. Coincidentally, he finds a time portal, and spaghettis himself through to find him at the very beginning of the story. 
past Ben pursues the devil, present Ben, who can now spawn hoverboards for some reason, follows behind. After an Academy Awards nominated visual effects shot of the camera turning around Upgrade's wheel, we find that it was actually this Ben, who mistakenly brushed against past Ben's Omnitrix and changed him from Upgrade to Wildmont. Now we got some continuity corrections, god I am so good. Ben now returns to when he was captured and starts beating the shit out of Nega Ben, to which his past self wakes up, breaks free, and puts the Omnitrix back on. Since Ben now got the Omnitrix again in the past, his future self gains one as well, and the two Bens mercilessly torture Nega Ben with a series of clips from the show's theme song because I had no idea how to choreograph and animate a fight. And that was Ben 10 and the Mystery Morpher. But hang on, Kuro, what did any of this have to do with the title of your video? I'm glad you asked, Mr. Google Document that I'm reading this script from. 2008 was the year Ben 10 Alien Force was to premiere, and to promote the show, Cartoon Network wanted to air a special called I-10, the Ben 10 User Generated Experience. This half-hour special aired before the premiere, which contained never-before-seen trivia, interviews with the fans, and features artwork and videos created by the fans inspired by Ben 10. One day, when logging onto YouTube and checking my inbox, because that was still a thing, a representative of Cartoon Network contacted contacted me, asking if they can air my video as part of the special. I should note, this video actually got some pretty decent attention online. Back in 2007, YouTube was completely creator-driven. There was no, uh, BMOs, YouTube networks, advertisements before videos, or anyone that could be generally considered top tier. Everything back then was fair game, and without all of this corporate competition, it was very easy to get your video seen by millions if it was simply good enough. Well, I mean, this video isn't really that good, even for 2007 standards, but hey, it got 2 million views, so I must have done something right. Anyway, first thing I did was tell my mom, who ended up calling the studio to confirm this wasn't a prank or an online predator. And after a lot of reassurance, my mother and I agreed to give them the video. A few months later, the coolest Cartoon Network special ever had aired. Ben 10 Quick Fact! Another concept for the show had been turning into 10 superheroes instead of aliens. And get this, one of the superheroes was a girl. What's with that? The Quick Facts are starting to freak me out! Okay, actually, it was super cheesy and definitely does not hold up today. But this special was very dear to the fans, and Cartoon Network was giving Ben 10 some legitimate front and center acknowledgement. I mean, the special did have some cool factors to it too. The previously unknown trivia was interesting, and it had a special animated clip of Ben answering questions from the fans, voiced by Yuri Lowenthal himself. And they showcased what they deemed to be the number one Ben 10 fan, Mega Million 12345. You can imagine the incomprehensible jealousy I had with somebody else getting that title. Anyways, I was beyond hyped for the special, not because my animations were set to be featured, but because the hype for Alien Force's relief was beyond belief. There was pop-up trivia marathons of the original series, special codes you can enter on Cartoon Network's website to unlock information on Ben's aliens before their episodes, and even a one-of-a-kind Omnitrix giveaway. Which, by any miracle, if the winner of that contest is watching this, please contact me. I am super curious on what this Omnitrix prize looks like. So, the special aired, and with the anticipation of watching my animation air live on TV for millions to see, I met with this. Now it's time to meet the Super Ultimate fans. We'll see their Ben 10 creations and then choose the best Super Ultimate fan of the bunch. Yeah, after all that, they only use a mere three seconds of it. And not even the best parts in my opinion. I mean, I was disappointed, but not as much as you'd figure. Yeah, they didn't air the entire six minute film, but if you were to actually watch it, I completely understand why. It lacked sound effects, dialogue, and was really hard to follow. But, links for both the original animation and the i10 special will be in the video description. All in all, this experience gave me the drive to pursue a passion along this path, although I didn't really hit my YouTube stride until recently. Since then, I've had about 4 or 5 YouTube accounts ranging from Ben 10 content to actual animations, an amateur attempt at short films, and all that good junk. A lot of these accounts are still active today, but after recently gaining access to all of their passwords, I've privatized quite a few of the videos because they're just not good. But hey, I left a few cringy gems available, cause why not? This experience was definitely an unforgettable one, and it's something I fondly look back on to help put into perspective exactly how long and complicated of a journey it took to get where I am today. And with the rising success of the Ink Tank and five years later, I hope to only go further beyond from here. Thanks for checking out my video. You can stay up to date with all of my projects on my social media, including exclusive updates on my Patreon every week, and join the Discord to discuss things with very passionate fans. To read five years later, please visit my website, curlthewebsite.com. But until then, keep it fizzy.